Hello and a very warm welcome to this tutorial series about uh, the Hive 2 synthesizer from UE in version 2.1. In this episode, in the second episode, I'm talking about the oscillators, the wavetable functions and the synthesizer engine. But let's get started. <music> Okay, this is the Hive, synth Hive 2 synthesizer and we just do an init here, like right click on the display and init. And now I um, zoom in so we can see everything perfectly. Okay, so maybe like this. Okay, so this is oscillator one and everything is mirrored on the other side, on the right side. So you see here sub one and sub two and on the further right there is oscillator two. So with the oscillator you can solo your oscillator. So you just hear your oscillator like this. <clears throat> on a lot of um, sections where you have this um, triangle you can click on that and then you can copy every um, parameter you set and paste it somewhere else or just copy it fiddle around and paste it again on the same oscillator you can save your oscillator settings yeah, so it uh, appears on here and you can show your saved oscillator settings or other oscillator settings in your file manager and then you have the already um, predefined um, presets like the init presets or some other presets here. Okay, um, I go on here like this is uh, the voices parameter, unison parameter. So if I play and add some more um, voices, I can do that with a mouse wheel or just click on it and select like four voices. And with the detune, I can uh, detune the four voices. Um, with the octave, I can choose another octave, like uh, one octave higher, or two octave higher, or one or two octaves lower. Let me just use that. And with the mouse wheel, I can change that as well. With the width parameter, I could uh, I can change the width of the sound, so um, I can um, put the sound more into mono in the middle or wider. Maybe detune a little bit more, so. With the semitones, I, I can um, go up some semitones or go down some semitones up to 12. So just click on it or use the mouse wheel. With the panning, I send the sound on the left and on the right side. And um, with the volume knob, I can choose the volume of this oscillator. Then there's a random um, button or random option where you can, where uh, per default is random selected. So um, this has something to do with the phase where, where um, the sound starts when you press a key. And random says, okay, um, it doesn't have to start at zero. It could start at um, another like 90 degrees or something and if I press a key you hear that the sound doesn't start on the same phase because it's changing all the time. If I don't want that, if I want to have a stronger um, sound and I put that on reset so it's like key trigger every time I, um, uh, I play a note the phase is resetted to zero there's a difference to random. With detune, 
This is more soft and this is more hard, especially if you don't detune all the voices. And the flow is something when you play, this is a little bit like a mixture of reset and random. It tries to um, continue at the phase where you um, played your last uh, note or where, where the last note that is maybe um, currently playing uh, to put that on the same um, phase where or to use the same phase where the, where the last or current note that is playing um, um, is. That was a wrong sentence. So if I play one note and join with, a, with another note, let's put that in here, maybe detune a little bit. It joins, it joins at the same phase, like the first note. Something like this. So you could see it a little bit as a mixture of, of reset and random, or maybe like um, it's not a, it's not a mixture, but it it tries to make the um, transitions a little bit smoother. Um, volume, I already had that. It's the volume of the oscillator. Then the vibrato. This is the vibrato for both, for the oscillator and the sub-oscillator. And the vibrato is configured not here. Um, this is configured down here at the keys, at the vibrato, at the vibrato LFO. And if I play now a note, okay. can set it off or nearly off or fast. The other way around. I can put a delay in here. So it starts a little bit later. And I can use that as well as a modulation source. Okay, but let's continue here with um, this one. So this is the vibrato. Then with the um, sub one, you have a solo button here as well. And sorry, <laughs> the right click uh, locks and lock is just to uh, keep it when you change a preset. So, and with the sub you have to tune and this is uh, per, per default on uh, octave lower, like 12 semitones lower and you can put it on two octaves lower or one or two octaves higher for example, and uh, but now there's something you can't hear the uh, sub oscillator because from the audio routing you have to activate it in a filter so that you hear something, everything has pass a filter and um, in this filter there's activated only oscillator one. So that's why I don't hear a sub oscillator. So I click on that and now you, you hear sub oscillator in solo or oscillator and sub oscillator together and as well you can configure the volume here. The double click sets it back to one octave lower. The sub oscillator has different um, waveforms, uh, oscillator form, oscillator forms, waveforms. I can put it like oscillator one and I click on the left with the left mouse button I get this menu. Like oscillator one, a sine, sawtooth, triangle, pulse width, square, half, narrow, white noise and pink noise. So I can put this on pink noise. For example, you can change this as well with the mouse wheel. And that is from the sub oscillator. On this area, there is um, the synth engine. And there are three um, presets or three um, options, features you can use. The clean one is a very clean um, sound engine. The normal adds a little bit of warmth to it and uh, make it more maybe analog. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And the dirty um, adds some harmonics, some distortion to it. And um, I would say from 
left to right is the CPU um, usage gets from low to higher. So dirty needs uh, more CPU than normal or clean. Okay, so let's go to the oscillator itself, to the oscillator one. So if I click here with the left mouse button, I can choose between the sine, so the triangle pulse, square, half, narrow, white noise, pink noise, and wavetable. So square is uh, nearly similar to, to pulse width or pulse, and half and narrow are like 50% and 24% of a pulse width. And you see on the pulse wave these little separators. And normally you, you could um, modulate a pulse width like, or you move it around like you want to have it. And with Hive, there's a little trick with that. And now I have to switch back to a lower resolution so you can see everything. And there is something that is called constant down here. And if you use the constant and modulate the pulse width, you get here in the matrix. Now you're in the matrix. And I put that on 200% so you can see it really clearly. And here you can choose between um, how much this pulse width should. Let me just change the unison here. Detune and maybe I don't want the sub. So you can uh, listen to that. And you see it as well, if I put that back on normal size, Now you can modulate it from the matrix. And there you have additional options, um, which I will explain in a later video. Okay, that's the pulse width. And let's go back to bigger size. Okay, so. And as well, white noise, pink noise, and the wavetable. And the wavetable is something um, you can click on, on this little arrow, and then you can choose from different wavetables. Wavetables are in the format uh, UHM or wave, normal wavetables. Um, the UHM is a script, a text format where you can define um, how this wavetable is and how, which waves there are and how many and so on and the waves you already know from wavetable. So here you can choose from different uh, wavetables what you want to have. You can refresh your wavetables maybe if you um, copied some uh, while Hive is, is um, running so you can refresh it. Hive will read it um, in and you can show your um, wavetables with a um, file explorer. If you're in here, you can use the um, mouse wheel to change the wavetable or the, the waves in the wavetable. Let's take uh, the six waves, for example. If I use the mouse wheel or I can click with the left mouse button in here and move that around. So that's not all because, sorry, because um, I could now change here the wavetables, for example, or um, select another one, but let's stick to the sixth wave. And here in the hive in the middle, there is this wavetable knob for both oscillators, oscillator one here, wavetable one, and oscillator two, wavetable two. And if I click on here, I get to this screen. And this screen, I see as well the category and the wavetable I selected, and as well the description of what is this, um, what are the parameters of this wavetable, like saw, sine, fin, square, 
and two pulse and uh, overall six frames. So down here I have um, the position marker and you see that's the same thing I did here. And there are some play modes like off. It's just playing on that position. With one shot it just goes one time through and with the tempo I can um, define how fast. Then this one is a um, loop function, so it always goes from left to right and always left to right. Tempo the same. And one thing is with the <clears throat> with the loop, or maybe I explain this um, later, then you can hear that more. The last loop function is um, forward and backward. So down here you have the interpolator and the interpolator, if you click on with the left mouse button on it, you can just switch hard cut between the wave. So this sounds like this. Then here's a crossfade. So we have uh, some smooth uh, transitions, crossfading. Then there's a spectral, the spectral um, just looks for some, uh, I think some oversampling, some harmonics as well, and looks that um, always the uh, the phases on zero while the transition is happening. But uh, this is the most uh, CPU intense um, algorithm and there's a zero phase. This is a little bit like the cross phase and um, the spectral, it just cross, fa uh, cross fades, but it, it looks that it is at the uh, zero phase. So, so that's it. So switch is just a hard cut, crossfade is normal fade um, spectral would be the most the highest quality you can get but highest quality means um, high cp usage as well and the zero phase is maybe something a mixture of crossfade and spectral if you want to if you like and always look if um, these made some differences in your sound because um, um, I would always choose the less intensive CPU usage. You never know in which song or track or patch you need that. So always um, look that you're very efficient, uh, that you uh, choose the very efficient setting according to which sound you want to achieve. So now I um, put here on switch. And there are some more um, options with the cyclic mode. If I play the the um, waveform, the wave table, it starts here with a sawtooth. And if I click cyclic and have it on one shot, for example, it just goes through and ends up with the first um, wave of the wave table. So normally it would sound like this. And if I put cyclic, the sawtooth will be at the end of the cycle. So, and now um, we use this because this is a really nice example, the reverse function. If I play now this, maybe with a crossfade, because it's nicer. And you see here um, two operator FM voices stacked in a single table, 101 frames. So the reverse just doesn't play the wave table like from the last wave to the first wave. It's like you always play um, the wave from left to right, then take the next wave from left to right, next wave, left to right, and so on, so on. And with the reverse function, you play from right to left, then the next wave, right to left, and so on. So this patch sounds like this. 
And if I play reverse, it sounds like this. Like the DX piano. And if I want to put the cycle in here while playing reverse, nothing happens because it starts, it ends on the first um, frame of the um, wave. Or the f not the first frame of the wave, but with the, firm, with the first wave. Okay, and then there is something else like these tables. And let's let me choose the simple waveforms again with the six waves and put it back on a switch. So at the moment, and let's put it forward, we have six frames. A little bit slower. If you count, there are six waves. And if I put these tables to two, for example, the whole wave table with the six waves are cut, uh, divided uh, with two. So you have two tables. And it starts with the beginning when I play this with uh, the one shot. It just plays three waves instead of the six. When I put that back to one, six. Now I divide the wave table and only the first three are played. And the last three are just here with the positions. You can imagine this like they are now uh, above each other. So this whole two dimensional thing gets three dimensional and you, you can um, move your position knob in um, the uh, what is it? The x-axis and um, you can move the other position knob, knob in the y-axis or in the z-axis. Uh, it should be the z-axis because forward and, and backward playing here is another axis. Okay, just imagine they are now like uh, two boxes above each other layered and with this I play the first the first box with the three frames and if I use this position knob I move to the next to the next box so I move to um, or start morphing the first with the second the first um, wave with with the fourth wave the first of the second box I don't I hope it's, it's not too complicated so I have the first box with one two three and the second box with four five six and so with this position knob I, ca I can um, switch between the first and the second or something in between so I get a mixture of both boxes so if I play this so this the four five six waveforms are played And I put if I put that back, the first are played. And if I put it somewhere in between, a mixture of both are played. Like this. And you could can put that like until 16 different boxes. That does make sense with six boxes. I don't know what happens now because maybe it tries seven. Didn't try that before to um, take a higher value than uh, there are actually frames. I don't know. Maybe it just puts everything in one box. So this would be every um, waveform in one box. So it's like the original. Or I just take again like the FM, the X piano on reverse put that loop on oops 
Oops. Okay, that's all about the Hive 2 um, synthesizer with the oscillators, the synth engine, and the wavetable functions in here. That's very powerful um, because you, you just uh, take one wavetable and divide it in separate um, sub wavetables and just move your position forth and back and up and down. Maybe let's see it like that, or maybe have a, a better <laughs> explanation on how to explain these movements in three dimensions, I think so. Okay, I hope you liked that video, and um, if yes, or if no, <laughs> you always can leave me a, a subscription and a thumbs up. And I would like to, um, to hear from you, leave me some comments, share the videos. I'm always very happy to get some feedback from you guys um, watching um, these videos. Always nice to hear um, what people think about or just to get some feedback like, hey, um, I'm here, I'm watching your videos and it's okay. <laughs> or just... Um, I would be interested to know something else from something maybe I I didn't explain here or so. Or you have some um, improved tips and tricks how you do something. Okay, um, so I hope um, I see you with the next video. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.